Welcome to QPAC Live, a program of the Queensboro Performing Arts Center at Queensboro Community College. We are so happy to have you with us this evening. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We hope you had a fabulous weekend and we hope to make it even brighter this evening. You know, we come to you live every week to celebrate the arts with programs that are unique and exciting, and tonight is no exception. Now, what makes this really fun is that it's interactive. So you can type in your comments or your questions right below the broadcast. So while you're watching, just type in your comments, we'll be able to see them and we'll be able to get back with you. That's what make this, makes this so exciting, that we can really interact and play along. So now just a few brief announcements before we begin. We have an exciting night for you planned. On Tuesday, we are relaunching Name That Tune. This is going to be spectacular, even more interactive than ever with score sheets and prizes and a number of different ways to win. And our host, DJ Bucciarelli. Oh, and I'll be there too. This is going to be a lot of fun. And in fact, this Tuesday, we're focusing on Broadway trivia. So I do hope you join us at seven o'clock. And then next Friday, we have the Tony nominated Charles Brown. Now, Charles Brown portrayed Smokey Robinson in the Broadway musical, Motown the Musical. He's going to be with us. He's going to tell us what it's like to become that icon, and he's going to sing for us. So you're not going to want to miss, miss that. That's Friday at 7 p.m. And also, I wanted to mention, we have a whole new donation portal. It takes literally two minutes, just two minutes, to show us your love. So if you feel so inclined, anything helps. One dollar, two dollars, five dollars, a thousand dollars. I mean, anything you can do uh, certainly would help uh, so that we can continue to bring these programs to you live. Also, I wanted to mention that a number of these programs will be appearing on Queens Public Television, QPTV, because we want to make sure that everyone has access to the entertainment that we are bringing them, even if they don't uh, participate uh, via the computer. So those are the announcements for this evening. And now without further ado, I want to introduce to you my co-host for this evening, a fabulous guy, a dear friend of the Performing Arts Center, Center and a terrific council member. Please help me welcome council member Danique Miller. Here he comes. Hey! Thank you so much, Susan. It is, can you hear me? I can hear you beautifully. Oh, thank you so much. It is a pleasure to be here with you this evening. It is a pleasure to be joined by uh, Keith David. We, we are so excited uh, about him being here, but we're also excited uh, about the work that happens at QPAC. Um, we've been down a little bit, but look what we're doing tonight, that we found a way to really bring arts and entertainment to the Queens community and then the, and the, and the New York City community overall. Normally, uh, when we when we do these projects, we we focus on a particular target audience, which is our Queens audience. This gives us a chance for the whole world to see the great work that we're doing here in the borough of Queens, and particularly what you're doing over QPAC. So I'm really excited about this uh, opportunity. Um, if I may say uh, uh, that that Keith was with us last year. Yes. Uh, yes. So I, it was just it, it was exciting. We all know him from his his acting, uh, film and stage. Uh, but not a lot of folks, particularly the younger generation, know that he is an absolute kroner. And yeah. and so we're, we're introducing him to a new generation. But I just want to say that at that moment, we we said we got to bring him back. He agreed to come back for September. Our in Queens, we do this thing called Senior Appreciation Month. And for the whole month, we do different events to show our appreciation to our senior population. That's and right. we, we were going to bring them into Jamaica um, and, and then COVID hit. Mm. But I want to thank you. I want to thank Keith for, for showing up. And as you said, uh, this is going to be on QPTV and, and other means. And I'm sure 
they'll be showing it uh, back when we get back to the senior centers, but they'll also blast this information out and we'll get to see it. And so I'm going to shout out all of our local senior centers so that they know that this is for them and that we do appreciate them. And I really appreciate you, Susan, and certainly excited about seeing my brother from Corona. Yes, that means, right? so, that's exactly right. That's exactly absolutely. right. You know, I, it, it, it really was exactly a year ago. It was last November that we saw Keith uh, perform his Nat King Cole show. Let me ask you, are you a Nat King Cole fan? Absolutely. Yes. Uh, yeah. If, if I could croon like Keith, I'd, 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 I'd be doing it. But all the way from, uh, you know, nature. But my wife is over here like, please don't sing. She just, <laughs> please don't sing. Uh, but, but everybody loves uh, loves that smooth as silk. And, and Keith really does him justice. Let me ask you a question. When you get back from a hard day of, I mean, your every day is hard for you, uh, for the council members in our district running around, you're, you're, you're either, you know, you're working with your constituents and you're in Manhattan and, and the local districts and, and you, you know, you're the eyes and ears for everyone really. And, um, so let me ask you a question when you get home at night and you want to unwind, what kind of music do you listen to? Oh, um, I, I, I listen to that. I listen to a lot of jazz. I listen to a lot of R and B. I, 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 I'm all over the place. Uh, I like a lot of, you know, seventies rock and all that good stuff. And, uh, yep. and, and, and throw a little hip hop in there as well. But when I want to unwind, it is, you know, mostly some some, some jazz and some uh, uh, some classics, um, and so I look forward to hearing the the, the classics now. And, yes, uh, yeah. you know, you 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 mentioned Corona. You know, Queens is really the home of jazz because so many jazz legends grew up in Queens, like um, Louis Armstrong and Ella Fitzgerald and. Um, oh, Fats Walla, of yeah. course, Louis Armstrong, they all, and Keith David, as you pointed out, um, I believe he was born in Harlem. We're going to ask him, but uh, he grew up in Corona. And that's where, of course, Louis Armstrong, they have the Louis Armstrong uh, house, which I've seen um, not too long ago. And it's, it's really an exceptional uh, site. Have you been there? Absolutely. Absolutely. They they do a great job curating over there and, and they, you know, it's a part of Queens College as well. And yeah. um, that foundation maintains it well and young people get to come in and really share our, our culture and, and history. And, and I'm really excited about that. Now, in, in, in the 27th district, we have the Asley Park community that was home of Ella and, and, and Lena, James Brown right. and, and all these folks. Right. And, and so how do we, this gives us an opportunity to tell that story to the next generation. And, and we're really excited about that. And we have a renaissance that, that's really happening now with all of these new artists, young artists uh, that are, are really doing justice to, to, the, to the arts. And um, so this really allows us not just introduce the, the young audience uh, to, to, to artists such as Keith, but really to, um, introduce them and allow them to, to continue the legacy. And that's what's most important because, you know, that, that's what we're about in, 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 in Burl Point. So we have an exciting uh, renaissance happening and um, it is, you know, the arts and entertainment is right at the center of it. You're, abs you're absolutely right. And I want you to know that we always, we deeply appreciate your support and it's because of your support that we felt um, absolutely um, committed to bringing music uh, to our customers and to Queens. And as you pointed out, really to the whole world and not to allow people just to sit in silence during this challenging time. So we want to really thank you for your support always. And without further ado, I'd like to bring on a uh, star of stage screen, the man and TV, the man with the um, beautiful voice and our friend, uh, the great Keith David. Please help me welcome Keith David. Hey, how are you? 
Hey! How are you? So good to see you again. Well, it's great to be seen, my brother. Oh, uh, yeah, in this day and time. Listen, in this household, you are seen each and every week. Good thing that we can now afford multiple televisions in the house. Because <laughs> <right? laughs> the World Series is on and Greenleaf is on. I'm, I'm just out if we didn't have a multiple television. Yes, indeed. Right? So, <laughs> great job. We're going to talk about Greenleaf later for sure, because I have a lot to say about that uh, and about the finale. Um, Keith, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you, you tell us a little bit about, um, if you would, your Nat King Cole show for a minute, because I don't know, maybe there, there might be some people uh, who don't know that you sing. Um, what, what is it about him that inspired you to pay tribute? I'm just curious, because we saw you a year ago, exactly a year ago, do the show live. Well, you know how um, um, Roberta Flack talks about killing me softly. You know, uh, and his his words, you know, resonated in my soul. When I was a kid, I, you know, my experience was that there was every emotion that I ever experienced. It was a Nat Cole song to uh, express that feeling. You know, mostly having to do with love, requited, unrequited, wanting it, losing it, um, mm -hmm. but. I felt that, you know, not only his songs, but um, his voice. To me, he sounded to my ear like I like I felt like I sounded on the inside, you know. Uh, so there was just something about the timbre of his voice and the way he told a story that just deeply resonates with me. And me being a storyteller that's what that's what uh, i mean i don't think there's a better storyteller than that yes you know uh, he tells a fantastic story but you know i mean uh, he came also from an era where there were wonderful wonderful singers joe williams um johnny hartman um billy Eckstein. these i mean and they were great storytellers you know, so I mean, that's that's the tradition I'm following. Billy Daniels. I mean, these these guys just tell fantastic stories through the music, mm -hmm. and that's the tradition that I'm trying to carry on. Besides, mm -hmm. uh, also bringing back romance. That's the other thing. I love it. I love it, and that makes so much sense to me. Council member, do you have a question for Keith? Yeah. So. The, the, we know that you are multi-talented and, 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 and it's a two-parter because arts and uh, the stage and screen and television um, kind of, is it is it the journeys or is there one that uh, that you like more? And, and, and then secondly, with, with all of this talent, when did you really know that you, you could actually, that you had a career? ahead of you um to the first question i just like to work <laughs> it, it doesn't matter what the genre is you know uh just you know give me the job and we'll and we'll deal with that um to me you know it's um one of the reasons why greenleaf was such a blessing because i i believe that uh you know acting for me is a calling like ministry acting is my ministry it's a calling it's not it's like i mean i love doing it i really like to do it but i'm also compelled to do it it's not like i mean you know every day is not hunky dory but it's what you do and that's what we do it's the way my soul expresses itself mm -hmm. uh i i feel fortunate that i have uh various ways in order to do that you singing acting um Let me I'm ask trying you. my hand at, I'm trying to try my hand at writing but you know that's uh that's that's a big challenge 
Let me ask you a question. And of course, we're going to get uh, to see you perform tonight, which is so thrilling. So we won't ask you all the questions now. We will come back later and also invite our viewers to ask some questions. But what is the diff the, the biggest difference, would you say, between um, acting on stage and then acting in front of the camera? Is there a difference? What What is that? What's the biggest difference, would you say? The biggest difference is the use of your energy. Ah. Um, you know, it's to me, I mean, it's my opinion. Uh, on stage, um, depending on the size of the house, there's a, there's a, there, there, you know, there's a different energy. You have to project your voice. Sometimes you have to, you know, make a bigger gesture so it's made, so, you, so that it's seen and translated, understood mm. in the back of the house. On the camera, sometimes it's just a turn of the head or a shift of the eye. So you don't have to, you know, uh, uh, make those big movements like that. It's just, I mean, but good acting is good acting. It doesn't matter what the genre is. Um, you just have to find the, the appropriate energy level to translate and interpret what you are, what you're trying to communicate. Well, then just one more thing. Uh, do you enjoy being yourself on the stage? Is it, it, or is it, is it easier or do you have a preference uh, in playing a character? No. Well, what do you say? Um, I mean, there's a, there is a difference. And um, I certainly, I can't say what I like more than the other. I mean, they're both equally as satisfying depending mm. on the circumstances, you know. And it's nothing like performing in a club, nothing, mm. you know. Um, but there's also nothing like being in the theater, uh, playing a character, trying to bring that character to life, um, finding his voice, you know, through the use of my own, uh, it's, it's being channeled through me, through my instrument. But it's, uh, you know, I, got, I have to find what he is about. Sometimes there's great similarities. Other, mm. you know, other times, I, I'm I'm looking to find what are the differences. I know I can play what's alike, but how do I find what's different that makes him unique and different than me? If you want to see me, you can meet me at the bar afterwards, or you know, mm -hmm. meet me at a restaurant. We can grab something to eat. But when you come to the theater, you want to see the character, right? Right. You, know, you want right. to see what the playwright wrote about. That's the that's who you're coming to see. That it's is talent through me. That is fascinating. Well, tonight we're going to get to see uh, the real Keith David. <laughs> Will the real Keith David um, stand up? Please we're stand going. Up. Right. That's <laughs> right. We're going to get to see uh, Keith David and hear Keith David uh, sing. And then we're going to have Keith come back. We've got lots more questions for you. And I know, I know our viewers are anxious to share with you their thoughts as well. So without further ado, uh, council member, if you are ready and uh, Keith, are ready. you ready? Uh, yes, I am. Am All I right. singing background? It, it, it's, it's, no, you're not singing background. Okay, good, go ahead. And I'm ready. <laughs> because, I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, no, your wife already warned me about you. So, <laughs> Um, we're all going to yeah. Well, we're we're all going to stick to our strengths tonight. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, Keith, uh, thank you for this opportunity, ladies and gentlemen. Please enjoy uh, Keith David. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, first of all, let me say I'm so very happy to be here. So. The first song that we're going to sing, we're going to, uh, I'm, I'm being accompanied tonight by my good friend, Mr. Ron Coleman. Say hi, Ron. Uh, uh, so here we are, and we're going to start out with this song. You made me so very happy. I've lost that love before Got mad and closed the door But you said try just once more I chose you for the one 
Now we're having so much fun. You treated me so kind. I'm about to lose my mind. You made me so very happy. I'm so glad you came into my life. The others were untrue. But when it came to loving you, I'd spend my whole life with you. Cause you came and you took control. You touched my very soul. You always showed me that loving you is where it's at. Oh, you made me so very happy. I'm so glad you came into my life. Thank you, baby. I love you so much it seems Girl, you're always in my dreams I can hear I hear you calling me I'm so in love with you All I ever want to do is Thank you, baby Thank you, baby you made me so very happy. I'm so glad you came into my life. You made me so very happy. You made me so, so very happy, baby. I'm so glad you came into my life thank you baby <laughs> yay that was that rendition was so beautiful i hate to stop you um keith i was just wondering i have a feeling we're getting some uh, our viewers are so thrilled um super to see you and they're they're happy to be joining us uh they mentioned that the computer is bouncing. The picture is bouncing around a little bit. I have a feeling. Is it on top of the piano? Well, it's not on top. Of, not exactly on top of the piano, but uh, okay. let me see if I can fix that. Okay. Gee, I, I wish we were, if we were together, um, I'd be able, I'd do a little tap dance for you while we were fixing the technical difficulties, but um, we'll just have to. Just stick with us, stay with us. We want to make this as wonderful an experience for you as possible. Looking good, looking good. Okay. All right, back to you. I gotta, I gotta get Ron to pull back here a little bit. This is enthusiasm, you know. I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you pull back a little bit. Uh, uh, now, I, I don't know how many of you know that uh, Mercury just came back from being retrograde, and I planned to sing this next song, but I learned the verse because because of the uh, it, it just went to went uh, went back to going in its right direction, and just came it's just coming back from being retrograde. Um, let's uh, let's sing this song. I bought a horoscope to see if my future road was clear. I turned to the day I had my sign, my day, my month, my year. It said that today was my lucky day, my road was clear and bright. But only you can tell me if my horoscope was right. 
If I'm lucky, you will tell me that you care, that we'll never be apart. If I'm lucky, this will be no light affair, but forever from the start. If I'm lucky, there'll be moonbeams all around, shining bright as day. You will hold my hand, and you'll understand all I cannot seem to say. If I'm lucky, there will be a time and place you will kiss me, we'll embrace. In that moment, every wishful dream that I ever knew will come true. If I'm lucky, I will go through the years with you. Ron Coleman on the piano. If I'm lucky, there'll be moonbeams all around, shining bright as day. You will hold my hand and you'll understand all I cannot seem to say If I'm lucky There will be a time and place You will kiss me We'll embrace In that moment Every wishful dream That I ever knew Will come true if I'm lucky, I will go through the years with you, forever in love with you. Well, the one thing I like about love, about Nat Cole and the other gentleman that I've mentioned earlier, was that they always told stories about love lost and requited, unrequited. Well, this is from the, uh, actually both Nat and Johnny Hartman sang this song, and this is what happens afterwards. So I walk a little too fast And I drive a little too fast And I'm reckless, it's true But what else can you do At the end of a love affair? So I talk a little too much And I laugh a little too much and my voice is too loud when I'm out in a crowd So that people are apt to stare Do they know, do they care that it's only That I'm lonesome and low as can be And the smile on my face isn't really a smile at all So I drink a little too much and I smoke a little too much 
And my songs I request are not always the best, but the ones where the trumpets blare. So I go at a maddening pace, and I pretend that it's taking her place. But what else can you do at the end of a love affair? Do they know, do they care that it's only That I'm lonesome and low as can be And the smile on my face isn't really a smile at all So I smoke a little too much And I joke a little too much and the songs I request are not always the best, but the ones where the trumpets blare. So I go at a maddening pace, and I pretend that it's taking her place. But what else can you do at the end of a Okay, so we're going to end with this song uh, because if you're if you're that much in love, she must be an extraordinary lady. And according to Duke Ellington, she was also quite sophisticated. They say into her early. And in that heart of yours burned a flame, a flame that flickered one day and died away. Then, with disillusion deep in your eyes, you learn that fools in love soon grow wise. The years have changed you somehow. I see you now. Smoking, drinking, never thinking of tomorrow. Nonchalant. Diamond shining, dancing, dining with some man in a restaurant. Is that all you really want? No, sophisticated lady, I know you miss the love you had long ago and when nobody is nigh you get council member back in there he is that was so beautiful keith i could just listen to you all night <laughs> i greatly appreciate that thank you so very much for that wonderful treat um i want to ask you when you were putting together uh the set for the nat king cole show was that a hard thing to do given all the beautiful songs that he's that he's recorded? Uh, yes and no. I mean, um, 
it was I was really uh, um, the show was really about Nat's influence on me and um, and those songs, like I said, that resonated in my soul that he just happened to sing, like like um, for example, pretend you're happy when you're blue. Um, you know when when uh, I had a choice going to high school to go to uh, performing arts high school or music and art high school. I didn't, mm. I didn't know whether I wanted to be a singer more than I wanted to be an actor and blah, blah, blah. And it felt to me, you know, uh, like like the words of a great uncle who you ask and would give you some wisdom in making that decision, like uh, suddenly a car, uh, you know, moving, down, you know, going down the street and I would hear the car radio and it would say, it would have Nat Cole on the radio singing, pretend you're happy when you're blue. Mm. And and suddenly it, it was like, it became clear to me, well, go go to PA, you know, learn how to act. And uh, and that, that helped me. It helped me make that decision. Mm. That is so interesting. And, uh -huh. I, and I also, I also feel that I feel vehemently mm -hmm. anybody who believes in love at all wants to be in love like Nat Cole sings about. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. No question there. Wow. Um, Council member, I don't want to jump in on you. We're going to start uh, asking some of the questions that the viewers have. Uh, is there something you'd like to ask Keith David? Oh, I think you're muted. Take us off mute. There you go. Uh, nope. Still, <laughs> one more time. Stand by. Okay. There you go. There we go. Okay. Okay. I, I got a little comfortable. I, I just fell back a couple of days. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm listening to T, Keith Chrome and 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 believe it or not, singing along a little bit. It, it was just awesome. And 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 I really didn't want to deviate from that and and kind of go back to the other stuff. But I, I, I and I know we talked about the various genres and stuff. But um, I, I I did have a question. I don't know if Joe Rizzo's on the line. Uh, but he's been bothering me about favorite roles um, in, in songs. So if 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 Keith could answer that, if, if there is a, a favorite uh, role or performance or something that really, uh, you know, that's very difficult to to answer because at the time you're doing it, most of the most part for me anyway most of the parts that's my favorite at the time i you know <laughs> as, as we're as we're as we're going through musical i mean musical stuff uh jelly's last jam was actually one of my very favorite roles of all time mm. I, I had some of the best fun in my entire life at that time uh but i also remember playing mac heath in in the in the beggars uh, uh, three penny opera and my god i mean that was more fun than I deserved, you wow. know. Um, um, you know, so I love the you know those parts when I do get to sing and act. Um, but also, you know, I mean, how can I? How can I? Um, it, it 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 hardly gets better than Bishop Greenleaf. Oh, I mean, that was a that was a great that was a great gift to my life and career. So I mean. Uh, uh, it, it got it got to fulfill a fantasy because I used to, you know, I mean, in my youth, I wanted to be a preacher. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, I, like I said, I felt that acting is my ministry. And so I didn't do that. Um, plus, oh. you know, the um, uh, I didn't want to be what my great grandmother used to call a jack leg. Uh, you know, and that's a, the preacher who uh, talks the talk, but doesn't walk the walk. And I didn't know if I could do that at that time. And mm -hmm. uh, uh here I got to explore the possibility, not just to preach, but to see what it was like and to explore what it was like to walk the walk and uh, sometimes stray from the walk. But I think, you know, uh, in his heart of hearts, 
the bishop really wanted to be a man uh, worthy of the honor of God. Mm. Mm hmm. What a what a rem rem uh, miraculous role! It was so spectacular. I have to tell you that I was not happy with the writers. <laughs> <laughs> I was angry. I mean, I don't know what kind of what. I mean, I guess they. I mean, I guess why they they call them cliffhangers and so forth. But um, you know, as far as I was concerned, that show could have gone on forever. And um, you know, Bishop Bishop is so much of what that show is about. Uh, for those of you, well, maybe we shouldn't say, or maybe we should say, but um, for those of you that haven't finished watching the fifth season, uh, the Bishop dies. And, uh, how, how'd you feel about that, Keith? I was angry. Um, uh, it was nothing for me to be angry about. Uh, and, and, uh, you know, it is TV. Yes. And yes. one never knows. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I think maybe somewhere down the road, there could be a spinoff and the Bishop might be included. Who knows? Mm, Don't mm. count us out yet. Mm, mm. That was so terrific. We did put a, put a picture up of you playing that role. It was just <laughs> fabulous. Um, we have a question uh, from one of our viewers, from Rosemary. Your movie TV stage credits are beyond impressive, but in addition to all those, your voiceovers are also numerous. Do you enjoy the variety they provide? Thank you, Rosemary. Uh, Rosemary, like I said, I like to work. <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, I mean, and, and I've, I've had uh, the opportunity to do some extraordinary things, uh, you know, um, unforgivable blackness, the life and times of Jack Johnson. Mm. Uh, uh, I got I got to do the life of Mark Twain. I got to uh, uh, Jackie Robinson. Mm. Um, so, you know, and those are all Ken Burns documentaries uh, and some, some, the, the war, wonderful, wonderful stuff. I've also done documentaries about um, Egypt and, and some, some great, some great ones with uh, National Geographic about lions and, and elephants. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I, I have no complaints and no regrets. When I, you know, when that day comes for me, I will be able to say, St. Peter, I had a good time. <laughs> and, and don't forget the animated series. And, 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 yeah, things that and, you the, gar and the Gargoyles, one of my very fa favorite things in the world, and Spawn. Oh, uh, tell us a little bit about, if, if you would, a little bit about that process. When you're doing, a, for example, an animated film um, or a cartoon or, or, or something like that, um, how does that work? Do you, do you watch, do you look at the video while you're voicing? No, very, <gasps> rare, very rarely. Uh, and if you do, it's after the, after the fact, uh, for the most of the time. Um, uh, many times, especially if you're doing an animated movie, while you are uh, doing the you know, voicing the character, there's also a camera in the booth. So the animators get to match the gestures and facial expressions that you're uh, that come about as you are, you know, playing the part at the time. You know, and and they get to use that. That's that's a wonderful thing. You know, when uh, because when you're in the booth uh, doing uh, an animated character, you know, it's 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 uh, it's 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 wonderful and crazy. You get to do all kinds of movements and gesticulations because you act with your whole body. You don't just act with your voice. You're just hearing the voice. But if you saw us in the booth, <laughs> you go, "What is going on in there?" Uh, but it's and it's it's wonderful. And but the animators, like I said, will have a camera, and so they get to uh, uh, draw the character after your gestures. Uh, for ex example, uh, in, with Doctor Facilier, with some of the looks, some of the looks that Facilier gave was what what was happening while we were in the booth. I was um, that was a that was also some of the best fun I've ever had, and uh, yes. uh, my good friend Dominic, who I work with in um, uh, um, a play that we did called Hot Feet, he was the dancer 
who did all of Facilier's dancing. So I, I knew him too. And that was, that was, that was a, that was another kind of great gift. I'm so glad, I'm so glad you brought that up. We actually have a little clip of you in the studio uh, playing this character. Of course, he's the, um, he's the, he's the evil character, right? And so if you think so. Uh, well, yeah. well I, listen, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, they make the absolute best um, roles. You know, it's always, I always gravitate to the character roles, if you will. Um, and they are just, they're the most interesting. Uh, and this was in Princess and the Frog. Is that right? Yes. Okay, so let's let let's cut to that just for a minute. We'll be right back with you. Take a look at Keith David animating this character uh, in Princess uh, and the Frog. We'll be right back with you. Gentlemen, enchanté. A tip of the hat from Dr. Facilier. How y'all doing? I wanted to take the villain, Dr. Facilier, because in order for the lead character to shine, that person has to have a great adversary. <laughs> <laughs> no! I play Dr. Facilier. Um, and he's a schemer. He's a conjurer. And... Uh, sorcerer of sorts and i got friends on the other side and the door slowly swings open that's an echo gentlemen just a little something we have here in louisiana a little parlor trick don't worry the way animation works is that we record the performance first as an animator you try to capture the performance that you see to make this character that much more believable and Keith David has some great little subtle things that he does in his acting. In it, the way he me. moves his eyes. He has a great sinister smile. <laughs> this voice that resonates. It's a real deep register. So we got ourselves a deal. When you look at it on the screen, you, you don't know exactly what's bringing you into this character. But as an animator, you know that those little subtle things are the things that pulls the audience in. Yes. Are you ready? I think of him as a delicious bad guy. He'll be on that roster of wonderful Disney villains. <laughs> How cool. <laughs> How cool is that? Wow. Wow. Yes, that was great. I mean, <laughs> I had such a good time. That is just the coolest thing. So in that case, they they actually animated. You did the voice first, I'm assuming. And then they sort mm -hmm. of animated the character after, you know, after you brought what you did to the role. Well, uh, they do an animatic, I think it's called, uh, uh, when... Uh, when they they, uh, they they do a preliminary sketch of what the action is, what the character is going through, what he's doing, mm -hmm. whom he's doing it with. <laughs> uh, and then they make adjustments after they see what the actor is doing in the booth. And they, you know, and they include, you know, incorporate those gestures, those facial expressions, as he said. Uh, and it's some, it's some great, it's a, it's a, it's a great process. It's really a wonderful, wonderful process. So, so, hey, Keith, when we look at this, what, what, what resonates to me is, is how it's just generations that are familiar with your work, right? Because you look at this and this is, this is uh, some young folks that, that uh, know you from this work. And, and then I talk to people and, they, and, the, and they're talking about Kirby from Dead Presidents is uh -huh. character. And oh my God, I'm, we mixed you and 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 and, and, and everybody is just going back and forth. The, the barbershop, everybody has a character, you know. Um, 
when 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 we put this out that we were doing this and we're in the shop, everybody's talking about literally their favorite character, whether it was Platoon or this or with the Franks and Bigs. And you, you should have heard the conversation that was going on in the shop. Um, how do you really feel about being able to connect with so many different generations? And and um, being that you're able to do that, how do you do, use that as a vehicle to, to make sure that there's some someone coming behind you that can, can, can do that work, that can continue to do the work that you're doing and tell the stories that you're doing kind of in perpetuity? Well, you know, God is good all the time. Exactly. Uh, praise God, you know, I've been able to do this. This is, this is like my 41st year, I think, something like that. Uh, and um, I'm, I'm at that point in my life where, you know, I remember um, Earl Hyman was a great hero of mine. And, um, and he used to teach over at HB Studios and I just started my teaching um, here doing an online class uh, with some kids from yeah. the Notre Dame school. And, uh, you know, you, there's a time to give back. And, and uh, this is that's one way to do it. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm so deeply grateful for the opportunity to continue working. It must be so interesting to uh, film in different locations. Uh, I think Plat uh, Platoon was filmed in the Philippines, right? In the PI. Oh, yeah. What 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 was that like? I mean, filming in, in the in the jungle. I mean, what where did you stay? What did you do? How that? How long were you there for? Um, it was a fifty day shoot, as I recall. Wow. Um, and I stayed a couple of weeks afterwards, just to hang out. I had an, I had my uncle, was in Taipei, so I. Got to go over there for a couple of weeks uh, while I was still in Asia. Um, it was fascinating. I mean, that's, I mean, that's another. That's one of the you know great fringe benefits of this business is you do get to travel, and you get to see different parts of the world, different people, uh, and you get to you know you get to see how you know uh, there are cultural differences in people and, 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 and customs. Mm. People are the same wherever you go. People mm. are people. They're good people, bad people. People do good things. People do bad things. And uh, they can, you know, they, they use different spices to, to uh, season their food. But many of, the, many of the foods are the same with different flavors or a different way of, of doing things. And that's just wonderful. I love experiencing different cultures and exchanging with different cultures. That's it's 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 beautiful. It's a it's it's a it's a beautiful thing. I, and I think, if anything, that is what makes America great: is that we have so many cultures represented, and we get to mix and mingle with all of them. Yeah, and exchange it, with all. Of them. I mean, they exchange with. I mean, you know, Queens, a great yeah, melting it, pot. Yeah, uh, uh, of cultures, you know, and, and different pockets here and there. And you, you know, you, you walk across the street and you can have this kind of food. You walk down a few more blocks, and you can have that kind of food. Uh, you can listen to this, this or that kind of music. You go to the village and there's, you know, all kinds of, I mean, that's, I mean, you know, that's what life's about. It's about getting to, getting to know you, you getting to know me and seeing how uh, wonderfully different we are, but how, uh, uh, Incredibly, the same we are. Hey, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. So, um, go ahead. Go ahead. Now that you mentioned that, that was a question that was asked as well. Coming from the world's most diverse county or borough, the borough of Queens, where we speak over 200 different languages, and and really being right in the midst of that, how has that really influenced your your experience in your career? Well, you know, I mean, I I, I consider myself a citizen of the world. You know, I mean, you know, and. And that began in the very neighborhoods in East Elmhurst and Corona that I grew up in, yeah. or, or in Harlem. You know, I mean, you know, you know, even Harlem is uh, uh, has its diversity 
especially now. I mean, it, 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 uh, it's changed so much since I was a child mm -hmm. growing up there. Um, but, you know, where, where my grandmothers lived used to be a predominantly Jewish neighborhood. And then as people began to move out to the suburbs, uh, it, it became, you know, uh, uh, multicultural. And, and you get, again, you get to have, you know, and, as, uh, and you get to experience black people from all over the place. There's African food, yeah. there's Caribbean food, and, and depending on where you're from in the Caribbean, and Dominican food, and, uh, uh, um, all, you know, Ecuadorian food. I mean, you know, anything you want, you can, you can get. And some, you know, again, this, sometimes this, the, the differences are very subtle. You know, yellow rice over here is different than yellow rice over here. You know, I mean, you know, the Caribbean yeah. peas and rice is different than Cuban peas and rice, uh, but it's peas and rice. And if you like peas and you like, I mean, that's good eat. It's yeah. good stuff. Mm. Uh, now, of course, Danique and I are both from Queens, uh, Queens, New York, and you were you were raised here in Corona. Ha have you filmed anything in Queens? Have I filmed anything in Queens? I don't think I have. Well, we've got to make sure that. Yeah, you project, uh, uh, give me so a job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm so down. what? What is there? Is there anyone? Now you've worked with so many people. I mean, the movies and on stage, um, and and in television. Is there someone that you haven't worked with yet that you'd like to, or a particular director that you'd like to work with? Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> right many so many so many yeah i mean there's, there's there are some really wonderfully talented people out there yes and um i'd like to have a chance to work with as many as i can what's next for keith david oh well i'm praying for um our new administration to uh, pay attention to the science and get us past uh, this pandemic sooner than later so that we can all safely get back to work. I mean, we started working and the protocols have been uh, quite wonderful. I mean, you know, the, it, you know um, there's not a whole lot of cases reported of people getting sick on the job. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. it happens, but uh, not a lot. Um, so, I'm looking forward to a uh, time and place where we can get back to, I mean, it'll never be the same normal that we used to experience. I mean, I don't, I don't think, for example, uh, as we are here on this platform doing a, a kind of zoom like thing, I think zooming is here to stay. I think this platform is here to, is here to stay. I mean, because, as uh, anxious and really anxious as I am to get back to going to the theater uh, until we get some uh, protocols in place where it's safe to be as close together as we are in this picture right now in person. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be a while, you know, I mean, so let's, you, you know, I mean, I, I, pay attention. Let's all listen to the science and do do our individual parts. You know, I mean, um, people who refuse to wear masks because for, for whatever reason. I mean, right now we're being told that, that is one of the uh, protocols in place that is uh, preventative. So if and and social distancing. I mean, let's get, just pay attention to that. If we if we pay attention to that, then we will not keep spiking. Yeah, and and, and Keith, you know your 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 home of Corona was one of the first and hardest hit in the entire nation, and and they were and and precisely um, by adhering to the things that you're talking about was absolutely able to turn that around, you know, and and um, if if there's a template uh, for how to do it right. And this day and time, with, with the tools and resources that we have available to us, it is what has happened in Corona and where they are now. Um, they have really turned it around there uh, with the very limited resources that 
uh, come into that community. And it is just using your head, being smart, um, and adhering to the science. And so I, I want to thank you for really bringing that out. And and, and uh, sometimes, um, you know, they, they have to hear it from you. They have to hear it from others outside of the community uh, to, to, to really understand that, you know, obviously other people who should have been talking about it, we don't mention names, that name anymore. Um, at this point, it's not, that's that's unimportant. I mean, right. know, what, is, what is important is we see that that is one of the things, uh, paying attention to the science and what the scientists are saying is one of the protocols or one of the two or three protocols that makes it preventative, that keeps us from continuing to spike and spike and spike and have to, and you know because it's you know it's 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 much harder to close reopen close reopen than it is to stay tight trust the science do what it says and um and then come back and you can come back stronger mm -hmm. now you know for that we do need we do need support from our local and federal governments uh, finally, we might have some cooperation. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. Yeah. Well, I must say uh, that was the fastest hour uh, for me, and mm -hmm. I hope it was for all of you. I had the great joy and blessing to share the evening with two extraordinary men, one local, one a little bit more global, um, but nonetheless, two extraordinary men, and I feel so grateful for that. Uh, we have some, you know, of our viewers. Debbie Miller is saying, "Love your work, Keith. Thank you." Beth Debbie. <laughs> Beth Parry is saying, "You are truly a blessing." Rosemary says, "Wise words." Um, so we have uh, the feedback coming in. Well said. Looking forward. Uh, oh, my sister Adele is here. She says, looking forward to all the exciting things Keith has ahead of him as we come down from this pandemic. Thank you, Adele. Uh, Warren says, you give us hope. Uh, Melissa, uh, Teresa, thank you. Thank you. It was great. Uh, uh, we try to get in as many as we can. Um, lo love them. Oh, we got Diane saying, love them both. God bless um and uh, uh deborah one of my favorite movies volcano with keith david so <laughs> the the comments are flying in but the hour has flown by uh i want to just give a a shout out to uh the the folks that make this program possible they're right there on your screen um we have a special shout out also uh to the dance project who is uh sponsoring this in part so thank you for them uh, folks, don't forget, Tuesday night, we've got Name That Tune, the Broadway edition. You get everyone together, uh, play along with your friends and family, whether they are next living next door to you or living across the world. We could all come together on this forum and uh, have some fun. Let's do that on Tuesday. Next Friday, we've got Charles Brown of Motown, the musical, and he talks about becoming the great Smokey Robinson. Again, thank you, Council Member Miller. And thank you, Keith David, for this joyous, um, joyous time. Do you want to take us? I know I'm putting you on the spot, and that's a horrible thing to do. Do you want to take us out? Uh, do you got something that you could take us out with? Oh, boy. Um, I'm yeah. terrible, aren't I? One more. What do we have? It was that for Keith or for me? That was for Keith. <laughs> Uh, now you cut that out. <laughs> Council member, thank you again. And I look forward to seeing you in the very near future. Thank you, Susan. And thank you to my staff and particularly Ms. Margaret Benson for coordinating this stuff. And we love Margaret. We love her. Margaret. And we'll be back and you'll be back. Absolutely. Fabulous. Let it go. Thank you so much. Okay. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, Keith, I know I put you on the spot, and you know, you can. We have what we have something. That would be so wonderful. What a lovely way to take us out, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, please joy enjoy the musical stylings of Mr. Keith David. Okay. Hmm? Okay. 
Um, this next song is from, huh? Okay. This next song is from an album uh, by Mr. Joe Williams. It's called A Man Ain't Supposed to Cry. Now she is gone My heart is yearning Her love is cold But mine keeps burning How oh, mine eyes could weep But I gotta keep them dry Cause a man ain't supposed to cry Days are long, the nights are madness, where there was joy, now there is sadness, torment and despair, they refuse to pass me by, and a man ain't supposed to cry. Caught in a romance that never could be Lost in a hopeless affair Slave to her kiss Will I ever be free? I run away, but where? Each yesterday back to taunt me the love I lost will ever haunt me woman's right to tears will be hers until she'll die but a man ain't supposed to cry Slave to her kiss, will I ever be free? I'd run away, but where? Each yesterday comes back to taunt me. The love I lost will ever haunt me. Woman's right to tears will be hers until she'll die. But a man is supposed to cry. But a man is supposed to cry. Thank you so much. Good night, everyone. Keith, good night. And thank you so very much for this wonderful evening. Good thank night, you. all. Good night.